morning. Old oh, morning, sir. Charming little village you have here. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, been doing a spot of digging, have you? That's right, sir. Hard at it. Hard at it. Oh, well, I sincerely hope that whatever you've been planting comes up. Why, crikey, I don't. Why not? <laughs> I'm the local grave digger. <laughs> here. How would you like to buy the skull of a Norman prince? And if you buy me a large gin, I'll chuck his missus in and all. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that always works, that does. Always works. <laughs> there it is. Exactly as I remember it from all those years ago. Our prisoner of war camp was just over the hill there. Was it really? Uh, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. ah, wunderbar. <laughs> Believe me, I was very grateful to be permitted to work on this farm. The people who owned it were very kind to me. <laughs> the farm is still in the hands of the same family, you know. Is that so? <laughs> I remember the younger daughter, a very pretty girl and very sympathetic to a poor prisoner. When I was working in the barn, she used to bring me hot soup. <laughs> so kind. So kind. <laughs> Morning, Sir Robert. Who is she? Morning, Becca. Good morning, my dear. Have all the arrangements been made for the wedding next Saturday? <laughs> Twelve o'clock, isn't it? Yes, Vicar. I don't think it would be advisable to be late, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, after we are married, you may stop calling me Vicar. <laughs> Yes, madam. Miss. Oh, sorry, miss. Do you know who owns that field of cows down there? Oh, yes, miss, I do. Well, I think you ought to know that the bull's got in amongst them, and you can guess what he's up to. It's disgraceful. <laughs> oh, you don't want to get upset, miss. Happens all the time in country, in field. Does it really? Yes, miss. It's natural way, isn't it? <laughs> well, let's find an empty part of this one and start being natural. Hey, hey miss. Oh, hey, miss. Don't Here's the butcher's shop. <laughs> what memories it brings back. The housewife used to give me some spare ribs in return for the odd job. She was very sympathetic because her husband was also a prisoner of war in Germany. <laughs> her twin daughters run the business nowadays. Is that so? <laughs> Tonks, how are you? Nice to see you. How are you, sir? I'm taking pictures of the local village life, and I'd like to get one of the squad. Does Olivia? Yes, he does. Well, I'm from Gay Boots and Kinky Boys magazine. <laughs> I'm afraid the squire is not available. For the past few days, he's not been himself. He's a bit queer. Oh, well, tell him to keep working at it, and I'll be round tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but I must honestly say that although life was hard as a prisoner, the British were very kind to me. Still, I suppose it was a pretty awful experience. What was the worst aspect of being locked up in a prison camp? Oh, need you ask? It was being completely cut off from female companionship. <laughs> Well, 
Where the hell is a blasted fella? Time's running out, you know. Well, I sent for him, Mr. Foster. He should be here any minute. Your drinks, Mr. Foster, sir? Yes, yeah, all right, Groombridge. Put them on their table, will you? Oh, and, uh, Groombridge, this room is out of bounds for the next hour to all members, uh, except for Mr. Jarvis, of course. Very good, sir. I'll see to it. Now, David, you're absolutely certain that the deadline is 12 noon today? Well, that's what he says in the documents. Right. <laughs> well, then, in about uh, 20 minutes' time, we shall be home and dry. <laughs> Hello, Charles. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, there you are, Jarvis. Sir. Uh, uh, help yourself to a drink, will you? Oh, thanks. I say, what's all this about? I gather from the secretary's message it's a matter of some urgency. Yeah. Why, Gavage, explain it all to Mr. Jarvis. Yes, well, uh, as you probably know, this building which the club occupies was leased to us at a peppercorn rent many years ago by the Pendrus family, who are the legal owners. Yes, yes, I know that. Well, the point is that the lease has to be ratified every 25 years by a male member of the family. Exactly. And if this requirement is not met, then the club loses possession and the building is offered for sale on the open market. So what's the problem? Well, we've run out of blasted pendrises. Unless we get a signature by 12 noon, which is in approximately 18 minutes, and it's curtains for the club. That's absolutely appalling. Oh, no, it isn't. It's absolutely marvellous. Because at 12 noon, these magnificent premises come on the open market, a fact known only to the three of us at the 1902 valuation. 1902? Well, you could have bought the whole site for about 20,000 in those days. Uh, 22,400. Whereas today, it must be worth at least two or three million. <laughs> and as you're in the property market, you're just the man to swing the deal. Yes, but are you certain we can pull this thing off? I mean, there are no hidden snags. Well, I'd be most careful to comply with the requirements of the original agreement. Every effort has been made to trace a member of the Pendrus family, including extensive advertising in the past few weeks. In what publications? Yeah. Uh, the Canvey Island Gazette <laughs> and the Sludge Pump Operator's World. <laughs> of course, you do realise, don't you, that we're doing the dirt on the other decent members of this club. I mean, this is a dirty, stinking, rotten scheme. And it's only just this side of legal. <laughs> and I love it. Stand aside, thank you, man. Stand aside. I demand admission. Good God, there's a couple of blasted traps. Get rid of him, Groombridge. I'm doing my best. Well, if you can't manage it by yourself, call a policeman. One moment before you act precipitately. <laughs> may I inquire who is the secretary of this hallowed club? I am. Then may I introduce myself? I am Lancelot Castlemaine Orpington Pendrus. What? <laughs> and this is my friend and associate, Smelly Bins. <laughs> I have come in answer to your advertisement. Being by chance in Canvey Island, admiring the view of the oil refineries, I stumbled across a copy of the Sludge Pump Operator's Work. <laughs> and there, on page 39, my name leapt from the page. Oh, well, we can't just take your word for it, you know. Uh, have you any proof that you're a Pendrus? Allow me, sir. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Hey, hey, isn't it marvellous, eh? <laughs> there is a light, there's two bugs in a bedroll, mate. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about it, I'm afraid he's a Pendrus, all right. Yes, even as a small boy, there was a strong resemblance and deep affection between myself and Uncle Rupert. Frequently he'd come to my room and tuck me up in bed. Should have been Nanny's job, but she was tucked up in bed waiting for Uncle Rupert. <laughs> well, now, gentlemen, you have summoned me and I have appeared. How could I be of assistance? You mean you don't know about no, me? No, 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 of course, no. Well, <clears throat> yes, yes, you see, uh, this being the centenary of the uh, founding of the club by the late Sir Lionel Pendrus, the members have decided to uh, <clears throat> make a donation of uh, <clears throat> 250 pounds uh, to you. As the last surviving member of the family, that's correct, isn't it, David? Oh, yes, 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 of course, entirely correct. Mm. 250 pounds. 250... <laughs> oh, do get up, Smelly. Nobody faints under 5,000. <laughs> Please, uh, accept this, my dear sir. 250 pounds. Oh, thank you. Uh, tuck that where you usually tuck things, Smelly, will you? <laughs> you wee pendrises, we're, uh... We're a queer bunch. Well, when I say queer, 
<laughs> Take my cousin Jasper. He worked for three years in Paris as a bluebell girl. <laughs> totally undetected, except for the French Navy, who have a nose for that sort of thing. Fascinating. <clears throat> yes, well, it's been a great pleasure to meet you, Mr. Pendrith, and I'm so sorry that you have to dash away. Oh, the pleasure is mutual. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye. <laughs> Come, Smelly. Cheddar. <laughs> oh, uh, then there was my great Aunt Ella. A magnificently built woman who, at the age of 32, attempted to elope. And as she stepped from the bedroom onto the ladder, the weight of her upper works caused her to overbalance <laughs> as she fell three stories into a flower bed. <laughs> Was she a college? Thankfully, no, no. Fortunately, she fell on her chest. <laughs> and she spent the next 20 years in the Middle East touring in a play called The Hunchback of Notre Dame with two hunches. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, I know you'll forgive us, old chap, but we have a very urgent meeting coming up. Then I bid you adieu. Come, Smelly. Oh! <laughs> I almost forgot. Where do I sign? Sign? Sign what? The lease that has to be ratified every 25 years by a male member of the Pendus family. A swine you all along. Oh, well, I suppose there's no point in beating about the bush. All right, now look here, Pendus. Simply by not signing that document, the four of us here could make fifty thousand pounds apiece. Fifty thousand. <laughs> oh, do get up, Smelly. If he succeeds in selling the house, it'll mean at least half a million each. Half a million. <laughs> oh, very well then, half a million. Now, what do you say? Get knotted. What? <laughs> the thought of it fills me with horror. I gave up money and its attendant problems when I first went on the road. Oh, go on, college, go on, take the money, take it, Don't go on. Don't be a fool. Can't you see what it's done to these three? They think nothing of stabbing their fellow members in the back for the sake of it. Yeah, but I, I'd like to live in a big house. If you did, you'd have to get up every morning and have a hot bath. <laughs> Don't, take the, Don't take the money, college. It's, it's not worth it. <laughs> Aha! A minute to go. The, uh... Fickle finger of Pendrus, wouldn't you say? Oh. <laughs> now get out. Get out and take this oh, mobile dustbin with you. Isn't our friend forgetting something, Mr. Secretary? Yes, I'm afraid so. You see, Mr. Foster, as a Pendrus, he's automatically a life member of the club. Oh, my God! <laughs> And to mark this auspicious occasion, I have decided to throw a celebratory party. Just smell the check, please. <laughs> there you are. Take for the bill out of that. Send in my guests, will you, smell Certainly, college. Right. <laughs> come on, lads, come on. Poor little head, they're all in bed. 
see what happened. Yes, it was that rotten Siamese cat from number 43. <laughs> Come through here like a bat out of hell, chasing an Alsatian. Why does he always pick on my gnomes? Why don't he try somebody else's? That's the fourth time this week. Fifth. <laughs> you know, I've a good mind to go up and see that Mrs. 43. I mean, them little fellas, they don't come cheap, you know. You get no money out of her, love. She's as common as muck. Mm. <laughs> so people like her who ruin the neighbourhood. Yeah. If I'd paid me rates, I'd ask for a rebate. <laughs> oh, I'm ever so glad she don't live next door to me. Yeah. I'm ever so lucky having a kind soul like you. Yes, well, what I always say is, I always say a good neighbour is a blessing from above. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I was hoping that I'd see you today. Yeah. I've got some news for you. Really? Something wonderful is going to happen. Oh. And just thinking about it makes my chest swell with pride. <laughs> well, don't tell me they've discovered how to transplant bosoms, dear. Nora, that was uncalled Well, go for. on, astound me, then. Well, it's about my Charmaine. It's going to happen to her at last. What every woman dreams of. And you've only just found out. <laughs> She's been the talk of the recreation ground since she was 12. <laughs> no, I mean, she's getting married. Who's the short-sighted fella? <laughs> oh, you know him, you know him. He's that dark chap, you know, works on the bacon counter at the super. Oh, you mean the one who sat on the slicer and got behind with his orders? <laughs> When's the wedding, then? A Thursday week. So soon? Oh, I didn't think she was in quite such a hurry, you know. She is not in a hurry. She's got nearly three months to go yet. <laughs> Where are you going to have the reception, love? Oh, well, you know, here at home. Mm. And out here in the garden, oh, you see. Oh, nice. That's nice, yes. Mm, uh, and that's why... Want to ask you, Nora? Well, I should be delighted to accept. Wild horses wouldn't keep me away from my best friend's daughter's wedding. <laughs> and if there's anything I can do to help, you know, like um, knives, forks, beer mugs, sugar, bit of butter, you've only got to ask. No, you see, Charmaine. Oh, that darling girl. I know I shall sob my heart out when she walks down that aisle. <laughs> I've always looked upon her the same as like one of my own. And so has Sid. Bless her. Nora, listen! It's just no use. I've got to come out with it. <clears throat> Charmaine don't want you to come. <laughs> well, she says that after a couple of milk stouts, you might come out with a mouthful, insult everybody and, and start telling them filthy stories. My darling sweet Charmaine said that. The rotten little bitch. <laughs> well, it's true, isn't it? You always ruin everything. I mean, look what you've done at my mum's funeral. Come on, what did I do? Go on, tell me, what did I do? Go on, tell me. T just tell me to my face, well, come on. You drank a whole bottle of sherry before we left. And then you disgraced yourself at the crematorium <laughs> by pretending to be Reginald Dixon playing his organ <laughs> as the public went through them little doors. Well, I was hysterical with grief. You were drunk. <laughs> and I'm not going to have that, not at my daughter's wedding. And another thing, I am asking you, Nora, if you will kindly tidy up this, this rubbish heap of a garden. I mean, it's a disgrace. I've a good mind to put the sanitary on you. Now you could talk to me after all these years. <laughs> after all the things I've done for you. There's only one thing what you can do for me. <laughs> and that's move! Sorry. It's all right. Oh, I was rotten to you and I'm ashamed and I don't care what Charmaine says, you are coming to the wedding. Oh, oh thank you. Dry your eyes, cos I've, I've got something to show you. No. Oh, I say, what a gorgeous frock. It was my granny's. She wore it, my mum wore it, I wore it. Now my little girl's going to wear it. Oh, don't. You'll start me off again. I'm, I'm just going to put it on this line, just for a few seconds, to get rid of the smell of mothballs. 
There we are. <laughs> and you, you know what I'm going to do now, Nick? No. I'm going inside and I'm going to make us both a lovely cup of tea. Oh, good. Well, I'll go and tidy up the garden. Oh! oh! I nearly forgot. Yeah. Here's my Charmaine's list of wedding presents, what she hasn't got yet. <laughs> oh, I see she hasn't had a fridge yet. No. <laughs> and further down, you'll see a colour telly. I'll be a tick. <laughs> For you and four for me. <laughs> and fifty pence each. That's four pounds fifty a piece minus the bedding tax. <laughs> four? Fifty. <laughs> How lovely. I should put that away for something special. Yes, I'm gonna put something away special tonight, like half a bottle of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what came over me. I've never had a bet on a horse in my life before. Oh, well, I talked you into it, didn't I? Yes. You weren't quite persuasive, I must admit. Yes, well, I knew we were going to win, you know, cos I had one of me flashes. And when I get those... <laughs> when I get those, the book is better wash out. How did it happen, then? Well, you were standing over there doing the ironing, you see, and I was sitting here with the paper studying the runners and riders when all of a sudden three names lit up like electric lights. <laughs> I don't know why. And what were they? Uh, little Lump. <laughs> Out in front and battle of the belt. <laughs> so I, uh, I did them as a treble. Honey, whatever made you choose those names? I know, must, must be some kind of talent, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I don't want to seem ungrateful, Dad, because the money will come in very handy. But please don't ask me to gamble anymore. Why not? Because of him. Well, what are you talking about? I mean, he, he doesn't know what's going on. Oh, yes, he does. He knows a lot more than what you think. I read an article about it in the paper the other day. What goes on around him now can affect him later. And I don't want him growing up to be a gambler. Well, you'd better either turn your back or stuff a lump of cotton wool in your navel. Because <laughs> I'm going to have a half a bitter in a minute. We don't want him coming into the world screaming to her for a pint, do we? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely disgusting. Uh, you don't deserve to be a grandfather. <coughs> i better go and put Ernie's tea on. Yes, all right, my love. I say, Lil, you better put your hands over your stomach because we don't want him to hear me opening the bottle, do we, eh? Dad! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Lil, Ernie's here and he's been up to something. <laughs> you mangy old goat. There's nothing on my conscience, mate. Oh, what about that widow up in Sheffield you told me about when you were plastered one night then? <laughs> that was before I was married. Oh, yes. Hello, darling. You passed? Yeah. Oh, well done, Ernie. Oh. You now see before you a fella who can drive heavy goods vehicles, class one, practically anywhere in the world. How much did you have to pay to bribe the examiner? I'll tell you what I'd like to do with you, mate. I'd like to put you between the shafts of a little pony trap and drive you all the way to South End. And back. Hey, are, darling. Oh, Ernie, thank you. I think it's worthwhile mentioning in passing that now I'm no longer a common old garden run-of-the-mill lorry driver. The boss has seen fit to give me quite a substantial rise. That's marvellous. Money goes to money. <laughs> so, Lil, you remember that little uh, sprawlsy pram you've got your eye on? Yes. You can have it. Oh, darling. Mm. Flaming sex maniac. <laughs> Dad, you also remember that I said when I got a bit of extra cash, I'd build you a brand spanking new pigeon loft? Oh, I do, Ernie, my son. I do, yes. 
forget it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Go forget on. it, you joke. You go won't choke. I'll choke you. Back it up, you, know. you two. This is an occasion for a celebration. Think I'll get the sherry out? Uh, yes, well, um, you and Dad have one, but uh, I won't. Not just now. Oh, why not? Well, I've got to be on the road again tonight, you see. It's part of the new responsibility bit. Special job came up and uh, I've got to do it. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. Still can't be helped. <laughs> <Me and Dad! laughs> yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll just pack the bag and then I'll, uh, I'll be on my way. A long trip, is it? Fairly long, yeah. Going to Edinburgh, are you? Uh, no, I'm going the other way. What other way? Across the channel. Oh, my God. He's going abroad. <laughs> it's not forever. Look, we ought to be very grateful the boss gave me this extra responsibility. It's a lot more money. Double bubble. Well, that's one compensation. And we can certainly do with it these days. Yeah. Whereabouts are you going to on the continent? France. <laughs> uh, darling, did you get that package? Whereabouts in France? <laughs> I said, whereabouts in France? Oh, Somewhere near Paris. Paris? Did, yeah. Did you get that packet of razor blades? How near Paris? <laughs> fairly near, fairly near. Uh, also, I want some... Uh, How near is fairly under... near? <laughs> right in the flaming middle, if you want to know. <laughs> yeah. Blimey, you're a lucky boy, aren't you? <laughs> Paris, eh? <laughs> That's the place where they go in as boys and come out as men. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it's all them mamsels, isn't it? Touch of the ooh la la, and I will never be the same again. Yeah. Are you suggesting oh, that I suge own? I'm not suggesting that he will, but I'll be very surprised if he don't. <laughs> you senile old goat. Uh, you be careful what you say to me, because I'm in a position to do you a good turn. Don't forget I was in Paris in the 1418. And I know the addresses of a couple of smashing little blondes in the Latin Quarter. <laughs> That couple of smashing little bonds are probably very old boilers by now, mate. <laughs> and in any case, I'm not interested. No, I've heard that one before, too. <laughs> Besides, Ernie won't have time for any hanky-panky. Hang on. Tell it, I don't want any. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he'll just drive his lorry there, unload it, get it loaded up again, and come straight home, won't you, dear? Uh, well, yeah, that would be the, uh normal thing, normally, to do. But, uh, I've got hang about for the return load, you see. How long? Couple of days. And nights. <laughs> <laughs> you beast! Here I am carrying your little baby, and you've been unfaithful to me! I haven't, I haven't. I... Now, you be careful what you say in front of him, because he can hear everything that's going on in <laughs> Rotten old reprobate. You've done nothing but cause a lot of unnecessary trouble between me and Lil. Come on, darling. Look, it's, it's, it's only a job, love. You know that. Yes, I know. It's all his fault. He always manages to get me going. So help me one of these days. I'll put one right between your yeah. eyebrows. Yeah, I've just had a thought. How are you going to get on? You don't speak a word of French. Ah, well, uh, the governor's sort of that. He's left a message at the garage. He's uh, sending some cousin of his round, uh, going to France anyway. Speaks the lingo, you see. Oh, that's nice. Good company for you, won't it? Yeah. That'll probably be him now. I'll, uh, yes, just I'll on. get it. As, uh, as I'm an outcast in my own house, oh, I perform the menial task of opening the front <laughs> door. <laughs> Yeah, well, darling, if you just throw a few things in a bag for me, perhaps we can have a cup of tea, eh? Just All right, I'll put the kettle on, we can have a fresh pot. Just a pair of us before I go, eh? <laughs> Mr Lloyd? Yes? Oh, I'm your governor's cousin. I understand we're going to Paris together. 